all right guys we'll just do this in a part one and a part two because I ain't about to start filming this again I ain't that fancy you know me so we're gonna pick up where we left off and when I post this I'll just put a link to like a part two of the video but that's what happens when your phone shuts off in the middle of something but I was getting ready to say the one thing that you will see in, in this little area right here you might see this a pop up and it'll pop up over there next to the the speed you'll you'll hear the unit kind of sounding funny it just don't sound normal it sounds like it's doing a little something weird and you're like what's this thing doing and it it's just running in the oil return mode and they will do that from time to time depending on temperature and stuff like that but normally what i do i'm going to do it on this one i haven't done it yet but i'm going to go down through here and i'm going to put little black dots next to the really important stuff um like your your evaporator pressure evaporator temperatures condenser pressures and all this stuff right in here nine and ten down here how far your ev is open and all that um i'm going to go ahead and mark that so that way you've got quick access to these parameters so <laughs> You know just trust me if you've never worked on one of these darn things and you're out here on your old rickety knees down on two knee pads like shannon is and you're looking back and forth and you lose your spot here on these numbers and then after a few seconds it reverts back to where it should be it gets to be a pain in the butt but if you put little dots next to that you can find them a little quicker um, so that way if you want to know what your span fan speed is you can just pop on down here to 18. you want to check your uh, DC voltage pop on down here to 21 so let's go ahead and do that that's the button over here on the left so when we start hitting this button we're gonna cycle through there and uh, you know the camera might not be catching that too good but I think you can see it so we're rolling on down to 21 yeah it probably went to 22 We're going to give it a couple of seconds, let it revert back to where it was, and we'll start again. The joys of real-world stuff here, man. It don't always go perfect. All right, let's roll through here again. So, coming on down to 19, 20, 21. All right. So there you see, that's our, our DC voltage there. And that is 371 DC volts. You've got to love that. That'll end your career. <laughs> so that is where you scroll down through the parameters and you check all your little stuff. You really don't need to even gauge up on them. It's going to give you pressures and temperatures and you can take some temperatures on your lines yourself and calculate your superheat and subcooling without even gauging up. But when you do gauge up, your pressures will usually be slightly different than what it's showing on the board. So let's just roll on down there to number eight. That's the module temperature. So this, this board, this module's running at 77 degrees. There's nine, that's gonna be our suction. So we're at 116 PSI and then 406. All right, and this thing is enforced, maxed out full speed running at 77 Hertz. All right, so the one thing I did want to show you for the defrost, it's gonna be that second button over there that we used to do the forced. Okay, we just hit it for one second to put it in the force mode and bring that little funky looking sideways T up, but now we're gonna hold it for about eight to 10 seconds. So we're just gonna press it in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, and we're already kind of starting to change some sounds Some things are going on. You can hear things happening. You see the sideways T is gone. Our Hertz is changing. And then this thing is gonna go into a defrost. And I gotta say the defrost on these things is pretty amazing, man. I was up in a higher elevation 
and it was down in the single digits and this thing barely had any frost on it at all just very very light bands of faint frost and when i put that sucker into defrost it wasn't even in defrost 45 seconds it didn't even stay a minute and i mean it heated that coal up there was steam pouring out of it all that little light frost come off and just dripped and rolled right off the bottom and it kicked right out of the defrost went right back into heat okay so there you go you heard our reversing valve it says df for defrost and we actually de-energize the reversing valve bosch is like ream they energize and heat so down there on our low voltage connections over here we're energizing the reversing valve and heat so what we did we just de-energized our fan is shut off and you can just kind of hear it you know humming along it's already pouring the heat out the top i can feel it it'd probably fog the phone if i stuck it over it but it's already steaming and it won't take long and we'll kick on back out of there so like i said in the part one of the video <laughs> Uh, I don't know that anybody has a video showing these things in defrost. Maybe this is a first. Okay, so listen to the compressor. I'm going to get quiet. I'm going to shut up. All right, there we go. So that was the process. If you heard something like that happening on a regular heat pump, you'd think, what in the heck is going on in this thing? That ain't right. But you heard how that thing ramped itself up. You heard that compressor really kick up there in sound, and then it slowly started going back down, and then it kicks off for a second. You get your reverse and valve shift we re-energize the reverse and valve back into heat and then our fan kicked back on and we're done and i mean that was what a minute or so there didn't take long but that is the defrost cycle on one of these and see it went ahead and kicked us out of the forced mode i can put it back in there if i want to but right now we're running at 41 hertz and we did all that over there just on those two buttons the one on the left is how we cycle through all our parameters and check everything. And then that one on the right, the force, if you hit it for one second, you're going to put it into the force mode and ramp it up to check it. You never charge one of these things or add refrigerant without it being in the forced full speed mode. Don't ever do it while it's running down here in 30 or 40 or 50 hertz always put it in the force mode before you even think about adding refrigerant and then if you hold that force button for like you know eight to ten seconds or so then that'll go ahead and put you in your defrost there so anyway guys that's my story and i'm sticking to it uh that board was done a little while back there and that did fix the problem because you saw that that fan is ramping up and slowing back down and yeah check out that capacitor size can you see it in there i'll hit it with the flashlight but yeah thanks for putting a six microfarad capacitor in there <laughs> we're all going to have that on the van aren't we absolutely i always carry a six microfarad uh, but anyway 
guys I'm just gonna put my force back in there and we'll get her going again because I got to finish checking this thing out make sure she's doing okay but I'm very satisfied that the fan is working and I know my defrost is working and maybe that let you guys see something you hadn't seen before on a Bosch uh, but anyway guys I'm gonna take off get out of here and wrap up this video sorry that it turned out the way it did but that's what happens when your phone shuts off in the middle of stuff real world man real world but we're out here working on the old Bosch guys and we're about ready for winter it's right around the corner so I appreciate it you guys make sure you leave me a thumbs up on the video before you take off and get out of here and drop a comment down there let me know how everybody's doing if you have any questions leave me a question down there and I'll try to get back to you and answer it I appreciate you guys watching and I will catch you next time see you